All right, guys, welcome back. I am Wicked Raider 22 here to take another look at a specific champion in Raid Shadow Legends. Of course, all reviews are designed for those beginning players, or if you freshly pulled a champion, just haven't heard too much about them. If you are level 25, 30 and below, these are probably those champions you pull, the excitement hits, and then you kind of wonder, are they worth building for the end game? So if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. We put out material every Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. So join the fun. Today, I want to look at Sand Lash Survivor. And keep in mind, guys, this is not my regular free-to-play account, but I do have champions on my paid account that have been pulled from shards, from regular events that you guys can also have an opportunity to pull. Yes, I have pulled them in other free-to-play accounts, but I did not use them there because I had champions that did similar things. But I want you to see them. I want you to think about them. And these are also champions there isn't a lot of information out there about. Now, here is a champion from the Orc faction. And I'll tell you, there are a few that have been added to the Orc faction that could definitely be put into the category of worth it. Mm, depending on where you are in your account. Sandlash Survivor is one of those. So aesthetically, lo love the design, loving the orcs. And what you're going to notice about most champions in this particular faction, their skill set is extremely similar. Now, keep in mind, as you're going through faction crypts, especially, you're going to have to pick and choose which of these champions you will need to build out in order to make it through certain areas of the game. There is a niche for every champion. It depends on what has been made available to you. So always, always, always keep that in mind before you decide to use resources for any champion. Now, you'll notice I have gotten this particular champion to five star. This is on my paid account. So keep that in mind. I have also ascended her three stars. And guys, when I'm talking about paid amount, I am one of those. I am a $15 or less kind of girl per month. So we're not going into the hundreds of dollars and paying for shards, though, if I'm able to accumulate a nice number of gems from a particular tournament, I will or I have before used those gems in order to purchase shards to pool. It's not something I recommend on a big basis because gems, of course, are hard to come by, but it's something else you may think of if you are really early game and you have not been able to pull an epic or legendary champion that's kind of game changing. Most of you guys within the first 14 days of play, you will have access to at least one legendary or epic champion. Every now and then, though, you get a champion that actually has a really similar skill set to your original champion. So it's not as helpful. So let's look at Sandlash Survivor in particular. Not a game changing champion, but a champion, depending on how you play, can be pretty interesting. You'll notice her numbers are pretty solid across the board. Not really in Spider's Den or Fire Knight's Castle, but these are areas of the game, keep in mind, that are more about CCing the enemy. You want to be able to control what is and is not taking place and which of your champions will be able to go first. So recommended artifacts, of course, are going to focus in her strength, which her attacks are going to be based on defense. Other areas, of course, I did focus on quite a bit was HP. These are champions that can do damage. They have a pretty good chance of staying alive, which is always important. But I wanted her to come in and hit in between as hard as possible. And we'll go back and kind of take a look at the artifacts that I had available to me to put on her in particular. So always let's go to the skill kit and kind of see what's here. Smell's weakness is going to be her first attack, 
which will attack one enemy two times, has a 30% chance of placing a provoked debuff on the target for one turn if this champion has no debuffs. Heals by 15% of the damage inflicted if this champion is under any debuff. So she's able to give herself a little bit of protection. Of course, this is one of those you can add 20% to the buff debuff chances and 15% to her damage. She also has Endless Sands. We can put this particular attack on a three-turn cooldown. Attacks all enemies and decreases the duration of all enemy buffs by one turn. Don't underestimate that second sentence. When you were first getting into faction crypts, when you're first going into those dungeons, being able to keep your enemy's attack at bay is going to be number one on your list. She can also increase the duration of all ally buffs by one turn. So I'm going to go in and decrease your the enemy's buffs by one turn and increase the buff for my team by one turn. If you have another player, such as um, if you have a reviver on your team, for example, if you have an armor girl, if you have any other champion that will either throw out shields or is throwing out revives or any other buffs for you, she can definitely be a good addition to that one. Her passive is pretty nice. Places a 50% ally protection buff on all allies for two turns. This is the one thing that I did like about this champion. When any allies, HP drops below 50%. Also places a block damage buff on this champion for one turn. So she's, she's able to give that support and again, protect herself while in the process. And this skill can be placed on a four turn cooldown. Her aura is going to increase all defense in all battles by 25%. There are a couple of bosses where this can be helpful, especially if you are in early game. If you're going through some of the bosses in campaign, for example, you'll definitely notice when you make it to stage seven of each area, there's a huge increase or a nice little jump um, as far as XP and power coming from that boss. So she's one of those that can definitely help in that situation. Now, when it comes to artifacts, I have chosen for this particular champion to keep her artifacts pretty simple and to the point. What I was looking at was defense, so that added 15%. I put a life set on her that adds 15% for her HP, and then a divine offense set, which added attack and 15% to attack and to HP for shielding for three turns. So now starting stats. And this is where we kind of do a little shrinking backwards. Her speed starts base level at 94. She is not by far the fastest champion. So what I was looking at as I'm going through, my first focus, of course, was on defense because that's where her power is coming from. But as I go back and start working through this champion or reworking her artifacts at a certain point, I will also go in and take a look at speed because her speed and her crit rate are two areas that I have definitely ignored. Now, the other reason why those two areas didn't necessarily spark me from the very beginning is because of the champions that I will normally place her on a team with. If I have faster champions, if I still am using Deliana, for example, out front, um, thinking about some of my other legendaries, um, if I am, oh, let's see, she's on a team, for example, with Madam Saris. Madam Saris is always gonna jump out a lot quicker, speed-wise, then that's what I would like. Um, the other thing is when they compare Sandlash Survivor, I'm going to show you guys who she's normally compared to, because that's going to be the other part. So you want to get her nice, sturdy, and strong. She's usually going to serve a support lead for you. And if we take a look, we can go to Brutal. Let's slide her in for... Uh, Let's slide her in here and kind of see how we do. We're on Brutal 12-7. So this is one of those areas where you can die, of course. But just looking at the shields that we're starting out with, uh, we also want to take a look at the damage that she has. Won't be the quickest on the team. But if I'm going for sturdiness, then I can definitely see the difference. 
Her attacks are okay. She's going to hit in that two to 4,000 range, depending on where we are. But keep in mind, we are at level brutal. You will see um, this particular champion in arena. Early arena is where I've seen her a couple of times. Um, I've also seen a few players that have dupes of this particular champion, which is kind of impressive. And they've taken the time to build both out. Would this be a champion that I would six star? She's not going to be in my top 10 to six star. I have gotten her to five star. I'm pretty happy with her there. I will likely fully ascend her definitely with masteries. Um, she'll probably eventually work through um, Minotaur's dungeon for masteries, but she's not going to hit my top 10 game changers. This is where the revival becomes important. If I'm looking for longevity on a team, let's say I'm running her with my lead champion. If you have a lead champion that's not able to farm your most difficult level alone, because pretty much that's what they're doing, um, she would be a good support on that back end for that purpose. Now, Dur the Hunger is probably going to revive her at least one more time. Dur does have the, have the ability to revive more than one um, champion, which can be extremely helpful as well. But in between, you'll notice that she'll throw a little bit of damage out there again and again. So look at Survivor. Deliana is at 164,000. She's going to be dropped all the way down to 28,000. Dur is at 55. So right below. But if you compare that to a five-star ascended still Boyer, who's still at 12,000, you guys can definitely see the difference. Where you do have a bit of support is going to be on the defense end. So she's going to lead the way with that. And then, of course, you have the heel, which is going to go to Dur in this particular battle. Now, I mentioned someone before that um, your Sand Lash survivor is compared to pretty often. And this is a champion that I actually just pulled um, from a shard, probably, I think, earlier today or yesterday. You will hear Soulbound Boyer. And do not get these champions confused. Soulbound, Soul, Soul Bond Boyer. Wow, that's a lot. Um, is in the Barbarian faction. This champion can be game-changing, um, especially if you are early account, but if you pull this champion, build her out. Do not skip this champion. You want to keep her, even if you bought her for now. I promise you, if you guys go in, do a couple of runs with her, you will probably see pretty quickly why. So let's take a look at her kit. And hey, at least we can say we got two champions in. Ancestral Guidance. Yes, she was pulled from a shard um, that was actually a reward for completing missions. So first attack is hitting on my favorite. She attacks all enemies and has an additional 25% chance of inflicting a critical hit. Think about this one. You can increase her damage by 25% which is always nice. But if you are running her on a team, um, an early team like Adeliana, if you have a sniper, if you pull Kale, if you have Eris, for example, I'm thinking about all of those champions that come out the box with a multi-attack, then she would be a really good adage to that particular team. For her second skill, Infused Arrow, attacks one enemy, has an additional 25% chance of inflicting a critical hit. Will ignore 75% of the target's defense. You can increase damage by, of course, 25%. And this is on a three-turn cooldown. Soulbound shots. This one, guys. Oh, the only thing that made me sad, I can deal with the three-star ascendant. Won't be a problem. But the books, the books, the books here. So we're going to have to pump in quite a few books. But Soulbound Shot will attack one enemy, has an additional 25% chance of inflicting a critical hit. Starts on a five-turn cooldown. You can take that down to a four. Once you ascend this champion, you're going to add in that she also has a 75% chance of fully depleting the target's turn meter. If you're thinking about those higher levels, I'm putting in my mind, you finally made it to Brutal and Nightmare for Campaign. You have made it to 
um, levels 10 and above, somewhere between 10 to 15, 10 to 16. As far as your dungeons, if you're working through those, this can be a game changer if she has been three-star ascended. What ends up happening that you will love eventually is the depleting of the turn meter. If you have one additional champion on your team that is also able to remove all shields, or they're able to stun at that point, you can go in with your nukers and boom, you've got a team. She has an aura, which increases an ally critical rate in all battles by 12%. So Soulbound Boyer, many people will recommend that you suit this champion up, you develop this champion and take her to end game. I definitely want to work on some masteries with this particular champion. But let's see if we can run her through a battle set. And what I'll do is just say, if given us this instant return, I'm going to run her on the same team as our other champion of the video, but notice the level difference. So I'm not able to go in and just fully ascend champions as soon as I get them and six star them out. But for most of us, it's still going to be a grind. When I'm doing multi-battles, remember, I choose to use my multi-battles to run all of my food champions through first, and then I will go back through and run my higher champions. Now, she'll have to be revived several times along the run, but she did make it through round one, even though she's only back at that level 25, four-starred. She is not ascended at all, so I expect her to go down a couple of times in this particular battle. But we'll see if Dirk can bring her back, which she does, and to give her a chance to get a couple of attacks off. That attack right there was at 3,100. Guys, she does not have any, um, you know, extensive, hard to find artifacts on her. She has not been ascended at all. I haven't ran her through many battles. So damage wise, I think she's only like two attacks in maybe. I can't wait until I can get her a little heftier and then she'll, she should be able to run a lot quicker. I am going to run her on um, a battle set and I will run her through campaign a couple of times, of course, to get her XP up so that she can be a lot sturdier than she is. When you first receive these champions, be really mindful that you're not looking at the number of times they're going down in the beginning. Don't judge a champion until you have at least made it, maybe it's the four-star level with them. Kind of see what they do. Go to the arena, see what teams you commonly see them running on and take it from there. I like running 12-3 or 12-7. It's a good area for XP. It's going to max out your ability, especially when you have champions that are able to run this particular level. So 7,000 is where she's going to be. Um, for her to only have attacked three times, 22,000 in damage. So early game, not bad at all. I know you can definitely, um, you know, artifact and book her up to do some incredible things. So don't sleep, don't sleep, don't sleep on your champions, most definitely. If you stay with me this long, guys, you've made it through Sand Slash Survivor, as well as our new edition of Soulbound Boyer. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We go in and post content for you guys Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. So be sure to check us out. If there is a champion that you're currently working with and you haven't seen a video on them, let us know. We'll see if we have them and we'll definitely run a video for you. Any questions, any tips? I am always open to tips and advice and would love to hear from you guys. I will see you soon.